why we have to perpetuate a belief that is silly. I was angry with you for a very long time because of this situation. And, I, and I'm not trying to like be a, a dramatic person right now, but genuinely like I know people that hate me, that treat me better about my faith than you, and you're my best friend. You need a therapist because Jesus isn't quite doing it for you. George Shanko is one of Logan Paul's best friends and co-hosts on his podcast, Impulsive. This past week, the two of them got into a heated discussion surrounding George's faith and practices of Christianity, causing a wave of disapproval from Logan's fan base and others for the way Logan was acting and treating George. But what exactly caused this kind of response from Logan when in the past, their conversations around the subject were more like this. Thing is, bro, don't give up. Work as hard as you can and throw it at his feet and see what can happen. And a lot of people here are going to disagree with me. I know that for a fact. But I'm telling you, you got to try it before you take it out. George, I love this. I yeah, love all great. of that. Yeah. Also, what can we as Christians take away from this discussion in regards to our own interactions with people who might be just as hostile or pressing on these same issues? All that and more is coming up as we break down this conversation right after this. Now, let me start off by saying not everything George says or does, even in this podcast, do I agree with or think is a model of biblical examples for Christians to follow. But even though this is the case, we can still learn from this interaction, the good, the bad, and everything in between, and give credit where credit is due. George could have easily backed down or out of this conversation due to these types of conversations easily becoming uncomfortable and hostile. But as we will see, he actually stands pretty firm in the midst of Logan's accusations and insults. So let's jump right in. You land on my face with your kicks sometimes with the with the mean words you say you you don't i think you really i think you're so giant with your words you really don't know what you step on when you say things like really like and i don't mean that in a disrespectful way or trying to pull at you i think that you have so much going on in your life and you're so like power driven that you will mold past your friends and family without accidentally without knowing if i say something i've said it intentionally and that unless I unless i'm drunk <laughs> but 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 can can you can or you can crush. you say something? I'm sure you you sound pretty specific in your recollection of your memory right now. Can you give an example? Of one what one you're that saying? really hurt me is you told me I need a therapist because I believe in Jesus. No, that I one hurt me. No, I didn't. I said you need a therapist because Jesus isn't quite doing it for you. No, you which didn't. is no, which you is true. No, you didn't. I, said, and I, I don't want to stand down. No, you didn't. You, you said think, you think I said nah, you need not a therapist because you believe in Jesus. I checked you. Jesus? and I said, what did you just say to me? And you said, what did I say? And you stumbled. And you're like, I don't know. What would I say? I, no, and then no, no, you no. fumbled. And I'm not backing it is, down from It this. is common knowledge that you don't interpret reality like reality happens. Mm -hmm. And you heard that incredibly wrong. You think so I said what you do need I need a therapist because you believe in Jesus? What do I need a therapist for then? Jesus isn't it doing it for you. For, and I, for I believe what do I need a therapist for? I don't believe you're as emotionally mature as you could be. Now, this is the point in the conversation that I think a lot of people saw as a turning point where they saw Logan going way too far. Not only was he being hostile and brash with his approach to this conversation, but then also trying to belittle George and his faith all the more with saying he could use a therapist and grow in his emotional intelligence because Jesus just wasn't enough or doing it for him. And as you can see in George's face, he is frustrated, understandably so. With all these little pokes and jabs, Logan is not just mocking or poking fun at George, but actually Christianity as a whole and his personal relationship with God. Understandably, I think anyone being told this in front of anyone, let alone millions of subscribers on a YouTube channel, on a podcast, would be really annoyed and feel like that person is not acting like a good or great best friend. And many people felt this sentiment, leaving comments calling Logan a bully or just a bad friend. And yeah, while I agree, Logan didn't approach this in the most beneficial and helpful way if he really wanted to learn what is true about God and Christianity. In my mind, though, I feel like there is another reason for Logan's approach. Because at the very beginning of this podcast, they mentioned how they had no real direction and no real content to cover on this podcast this week. So what could they bring to the table to get people to talk and check out their podcast? Oh, I know. Let's poke fun of George and Christianity. Let me play it up a bit for the cameras. Be a bit unreasonable. Display this blind passion and make a ton of blanket statements. That will get people talking. And look, it worked. Not only have a ton of Christians and non-Christian YouTubers covered this, including this very video, but the podcast at the time of this recording, after only being out for eight days, has almost two million views. And even by the end of the segment and throughout, George says that he isn't as bothered by Logan and sees this hostility from him as an opportunity to share his faith and thoughts with him, hoping that it can be done in a loving fashion in the future and not be met with this heat and argumentative nature that Logan keeps trying to bring to the conversation. But what exactly is it that caused Logan to be so aggressive and rude when it comes to talking to George about Christianity? Well, 
It was this. Graceful in any way is is harmful and is and is destructive. I to, disagree. To people. I disagree. I just I, I don't think that we have to condemn homosexuality. Um, I don't think that we have to condemn sex before marriage um, or a, a slew. Of so don't so don't con- so like, don't, don't condemn. Don't, so don't condemn it. I don't know if I can. I just don't know if I can get behind. Like that's silly to me. That seems silly to me. So I so I think it's I think it's a silly practice to engage in, and I think it's I think it deserves satire. Like, come on. Bro. Yeah, but that's you're, not you're subscribe to a doctrine that that slams homosexuality. Come on, bro. And, that's ridiculous. I mean, again, we've talked about this. <clears throat> First of all, every religion, Muslims, Jewish people, Christians, they all believe. Well, that Georgie, that's the other thing. Oh, Everyone, talk. no, well, let him speak. That's the well, thing. let him speak. Every, every, every. You all think you're right, and you think that the Muslims are going to hell, and they think that you're going to hell, and the well, Jews I, I think never that said that you can't put words going, in my house. No, in his but, house. But you, but you, you put do. words in his house. You can't put words in my mouth. I never said that. Let him speak. If you believe in Christianity, that's what you think. You, I don't, you think might not. Is, I don't it, think that is the case. See, th- I think this is the problem, Logan. You assume so much that you're like you don't know one Bible. What verse. happens to a Muslim when they die, George? I don't know. God says no one knows who goes to heaven or hell. That's in the Bible. But they do go to heaven or hell. Yes. A Muslim can go to heaven. Yes. Can a Jewish person go to heaven? Again, I don't know who goes to heaven or hell. I am not. I am not the guy who decides who's going to heaven or but hell. Does, doesn't 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 <clears throat> your scripture say something about? If you're not subscribed to Christianity, oh you're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you can only go through the Father, uh, through the Son. Yeah. So Christianity believe that through Jesus you could be saved, but that doesn't well, mean I go Jesus, condemn. Not, not Allah. So, but question: What makes you think I'm going around condemning people? That's what I want to know. Because you always put that on me. You always yell at me about gay people. I, I never once talk about because, gay people because you're subscribed to the doctrine. That perpet- perpetuates that information. I'm subscribed to love my neighbor. Not everyone in your religion is. Yeah, but that's they, yeah, fine. but singly. So Logan feels like Christianity is silly or stupid for upholding traditional marriage values and for believing in saving sex for marriage. In his eyes, George and anyone who claims Christianity is a bigot who is condemning people and siding with those who would cause harm and damage and hate to others who don't follow the faith. Now, I think we can all understand what's wrong with his logic here, that everything and anything has different sides to it, and they all have extremes. And looking at the worst of people on a situation or the worst outcomes of something is a straw man argument and is weak rational reasoning, which Logan claims that he is all about rationality and being rational, except, I guess, when it comes to nuances and understanding of Christianity. Now, George asks a really good question to Logan, though. He asks him, when have you ever seen me condemning or hating? hating somebody, right? Because there is a difference between sharing the truth of the gospel, which yes, if we are honest, shows us how all of us, me included, are condemned. All of us are lost, blind people in need of a savior. And that's not the same thing as hating anyone. In fact, I would go far as to say that sharing the gospel is the most loving thing a follower of Jesus could ever do. If they really believe in what they're saying, and if Logan looked at it from that perspective for just a second, he would see that if the gospel is the only way to save someone from hell, why wouldn't they share the full gospel with everyone and anyone who's willing to listen? The crazy thing is, Logan actually knows this is part of the Christian belief because he mentions John 14, 6, that no one comes to the Father except through the Son. Now, in these kinds of attacks and scenarios, I think our gut reaction might be to back down or separate ourselves from the beliefs being stated here. One, because we just know that going against LGBTQ stuff is not a popular stance and can be a long, cautious conversation just trying to break some of that down. But also because we don't want to be associated with people who might be on the far side like the Westboro Baptists, who I would argue aren't even Christians themselves, but that's for a whole nother time and a whole nother video. And this is what George does, claiming he doesn't know who goes to heaven and who goes to hell, that he can't know for sure, yet this is the whole point of the good news of the gospel, that even though we are all sinners unable to save ourselves, all deserving of hell, Jesus makes a way that we can know we will be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. But when we shy a bit away from these uncomfortable questions, it can lead to a downplaying of what the scriptures do say on a subject and the assurance that they could bring us on life after death. What we do see from George is a focus on Jesus' command to love our neighbors, which is a good point to bring up in this discussion, especially in the face of being accused of being a part of a religious group that spews hate towards other communities. So to George's credit, good job there. I think in this scenario, it would have been a good distinction to start bringing up the gospel 
gospel that all of us, regardless of sexual orientation, are condemned and fall short of God's standard of holiness. And so we have a debt that these transgressions against God, we cannot pay or fix. We all are in need of a savior. And that is exactly why Jesus died in our place. Now, maybe George would have gotten there, but he was cut off by Mike and Logan time and time again. Logan keeps making these blanket statements about Christianity, and Mike ends up asking Logan this question that I think reveals a lot. Check this out. What is it about that idea of live and let live that is, or, or not doing that, that is so difficult to do? Like, why can't George just believe in what he wants to believe in? Someone else can believe in what they want to believe in, and everyone can have their own. No, they can, and that's where I always end up. Like, I'm not here to, to try to change anyone's mind, but I'm always here for the conversation because I find it fascinating. Mm. And, and 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 maybe one day I'll, you know, get the answers that I'm kind of just curious about. Not seeking, but I'm, I'm just curious. Now, Logan says he's not seeking. He's just curious. So right there, to me, is what I think would help bring clarity to anyone having these kinds of conversations. Understanding what the person you are talking to is looking for in your dialogue. Do they genuinely want to have a discussion? If yes, great. Then find a good time, a good place to have this calm discussion on the subject where heads can be cool and rational, being gracious to one another as they share each other's views. But the reality is, I don't think that this is what Logan was looking for. It seemed more like Logan was looking for an argument for content for the podcast, or maybe not, because here's what else George had to say on the subject about their conversations being had off camera. 100%. This, it, it, it really does fascinate me. I know it does. I was angry with you for a very long time because of this situation. And, I, and I'm not trying to like be a, a dramatic person right now, but genuinely like i know people that hate me that treat me better about my faith than you and you're my best friend so like i get you're wrestling with it and you like to tackle things head on and i've told you before if you want to talk about it let's talk about it peacefully or we don't even have to talk about it but if you notice i never ever question anybody's beliefs or push them to believe in jesus i express my love and if you express your higher power, I'm all ears and I will listen to you for days and express because there's a lot of takeaway I could learn from it. All I'm saying is I think you're so quick because you believe in something so much that you're determined for me to see it from your point of view. And what, that's what, how wars are started. You, what do you think I believe in, George? I, it sounds like you have a misconception about what you think I believe. Buddy, you cannot tell me about misconception and you keep misquoting the Bible and you keep putting me into a, a box that I'm not in. You wait, keep wait, bringing up that I bash gay people all the time. When have I ever done that? Bro, that is a staple of your religion. And it's not bashing gay people. It's condemning them but have for you what as, they like. For, That's as, so as ridiculous. Your best friend, as your best friend, have you ever seen me to any straight man or gay man or any type of person I've ever, have I ever shown any hatred no, ever? No, but you're in the same boat with a large group of people that do. I believe I'm in the same boat with a lot of hypocrites. And I do agree. I think there's a lot of hypocrites. But you can't paint me out to be like somebody I'm not. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm, 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 I'm not talking about you. you. I'm talking about religion is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. What do you think I believe? You? Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that you believe in a higher power. I believe that it's not a God. I believe you think it's a force an energy and you're trying to put together where our energy goes afterwards. And you're still in the midst of putting that together. I listen to you. I don't, have I ever bashed that? No, never. I never would. And I also, I believe that your energy is the same of me, but this is the way I want to, I want all of us to like be together. Like at the end of the day, bro, I can never prove to you that Jesus Christ exists. I can never do that. You can never prove that your belief system exists, but what we could do is have like-minded conversations and grow from it. Mm. And I just, I want there to be love in the conversation instead of like, because like if we pick on each other and other things, it's totally fine. Like you, you suck at comedy. Mm -mm. I get that. Everybody mm -mm. knows that. Mm -mm. All that stuff. Mm -mm. But when it comes to religion, uh, you have to be. You have no. to tiptoe. No, I don't. No, I don't. Well, I do with anybody. And by the way, you brought up like Muslims and Jews. Dude, I sit at synagogues and talk to to rabbis all the time and pick their brains. I sit with Muslim people. They're most peaceful people. We went so to Saudi who's Arabia. Right? I want you to say it right now. Who's right? Who's whose Who, God is real? My God is real in my eyes. Yikes. Yeah, Logan tries to turn this around and make it seem like George is the one skewing Logan's beliefs when this whole conversation has absolutely nothing to do with him and his belief. Logan has been the one poking and mocking Christianity this whole time and then wants to pretend to be offended at George for just expressing how he feels Logan is coming off and approaching the subject in an unhealthy or at the very least unbeneficial way. And I think Logan does this as an attempt to kind of overshadow the truth that George just shared with him. 
that there are people who hate him yet treat him better and have more respect for him and his faith than Logan does who claims to be his best friend. Now, I think one of the biggest takeaways we as Christians can learn from this is it is okay to be firm in our beliefs, regardless if others mock or disapprove of it, or even if they try to twist what the Bible says or whatever misconceptions they bring to the table. Just be willing to have a conversation if their goal is truly to understand, and be okay with just sharing the gospel as best as you can before walking away and saving your time and energy if you know they're just trolling. Regardless of their motivations though, modeling love and patience for those who are far from God is one of the best things we as Christians can do. It invites more genuine conversation, it shows the standard of what we hope a productive conversation can look like, and helps display the love the Father has for each and every one of us. Now, if you listen to these parts of the podcast and were feeling a bit uneasy, like you weren't sure how you would answer some of these questions and feeling like your Bible knowledge and reading could be a bit better, I got you. Check out these videos right over here where we talk about those very things and subscribe for more content like this. But until next time, know that you are valued and loved and I'll see you soon.